everyone. Uh, this is module one, topic two, and we're going to be uh, reviewing sequences today. Uh, again, do the work first and then come to this video and then see which ones uh, you uh, just go over the ones that you have questions. Okay. And they'll be in, in numerical order. So we're going to start with one. So if you're looking for problem number 10, then go to the middle. Um, I'll have them labeled later on in this video. Okay. Um, let's take a look. So we're doing arithmetic and geometric sequences. Uh, the first one is arithmetic on the right-hand side. I have some notes in there so we can refer back to this. So arithmetic, remember, is adding the same number every time. Uh, that same number that we're adding every time is called a common difference. And uh, we here we have a uh, graph, you can see. Okay. Um, the graph is uh, always going to be linear. It's going to be discrete because, remember, we're just adding the same amount every time. Think of it like the slope, right? It's the same amount every time. And um, here's our explicit and recursive formulas that we're going to be using to answer some of these questions. All right, so let's get started. So number one, uh, if you notice right here, we have 28, 25, 22, 19. Um, looking at the small differences, uh, we're not multiplying anything. We're going to be uh, just subtracting. So 28 minus 25, that's going to give me, so I'm subtracting three every time, right? So again, like I said before, since we are adding the same number every time, in this case, subtracting. So we're like adding negative numbers, right? Which is the same thing as subtracting. Uh, that is going to be arithmetic. The recursive formula. So I'm going to go to this recursive formula so we can refer back to this uh, on the right-hand side. So the recursive formula, anything with an N, we're going to leave because the part of being a formula is that you can use it for any term, so, right? That's why it's N, any term, right? N-E. All right. So we're going to, I'm going to just write it underneath here. So this is going to be A-N is equal to, and notice that this N is smaller and lower uh, than the N. They're not equals. Okay. This is just like what kind of term it, it, it is, right? That is equal to N-A-N minus one which means that that's the previous term, plus the D. In this case, our D is negative three. So you could either write plus negative three like this, or what I like to do is I like to just write minus three. So make sure your minus three is the same size as your A, just like that. And then, uh, so we got, uh, we got the part where we're subtracting three every time. So the other thing we need to do is tell what the first term is so that A1 is just the first term. So our right, first term is just this 28, right? All right, so if I'm going to use a highlighter, this minus 3 comes from these guys right here, what we're subtracting every time. And then the uh, the first term is this first term right there. That's where they're coming from. Okay, now, so that's it. That's the recursive formula. The recursive formula we don't normally use to find, like, really big terms. But this is what we use. Like, this is our brain. This is what we're doing. We're, oh, subtract three, subtract three. What are we subtracting three from? The previous term. That previous term is represented algebraically like this, a n minus one. So now the explicit formula is going to be more useful to us. Um, this is useful for when we're trying to predict terms that are very far away. Like right here, the 32nd term. Do you really want to subtract three that many times? Like, that's a lot of times. Technically, it's 31 times, but you know. Um, we're not going there today. Um, so explicit formula is right here. So again, we're going to leave the an because it's our formula. We wanted to find it for any term. And here we have a one. You see right there it says replace with the first term. Why? Because that's what a one is. We not we need to know where to start. We're going to go with twenty eight. And then uh, our plus d, so our common denominator, our common denominator, common difference. So minus three times n minus one. So again, anything with an n in there, you're going to leave it because that's part of the formula. Um, so here we go. Again, our first term, let me go with the same colors. Our 28 is right there. And our minus three is right there. So the same kind of information for both formulas. It's just we're going to use them slightly differently. So um, if you notice right here, ooh, that was great. Right about there. So it says find the 32nd term. So basically, this is the first term, 28 is the first term, then 25 is the second term, third term, fourth term, 
and we want to get to the 30 second term. And the, in order to do that, uh, instead of just keep on subtracting three every single time, we're going to use explicit formula. So we're going to go A32, because our N is now 32, because we want to know a specific term. We want to know the 30 second term. So our 32 is our N is equal to, again, 28 minus three. And then now instead of N, we're going to replace it with 32 minus one. Okay, so just to be clear, the 32nd term is our n. Okay, and so that gets replaced uh, with these n's right here, this one and that one. Okay, so those are the same things. And so now, uh, if you notice on the right hand side, all we have left are numbers. And so we're going to uh, do, do some order of operations. So we know that parentheses go first. So we're going to go 28 minus 3 times 31. 32 minus 1 is 31. And then we're going to not, a lot of people subtract first, but again, that's not order of operations. What do we say the order of operations is? It's parentheses first, and we have exponents. We don't have exponents here, so we're skipping that. Then it's multiply, divide, depending on which one's left or right. Uh, and then add and subtract is always last. Okay. And so we're going to do, so it's 28 uh, minus 3 times 30, 31, which is going to be 93. Now we're going to finally do our subtraction, which is going to be negative. Negative 60. Oh, my dear. 65. You can check me out. Um, but they do have, we do have the answers on the back. So we're going to just scroll down here really quick. Uh, yep. If you notice right here, yep, we got arithmetic sequence, common difference is negative three. There's our explicit formula, there's our recursive, and there you go. A32 is equal to negative 65. So if you were going to do continue the minus 3 onto the 32nd term, you would find that it would be negative 65. See how this kind of gives us a shortcut way of doing this? Okay, so anyways, there's your answer right there. I'm just, just going to write like this. So A32 is equal to negative 65. I would have written it below, but I don't have room, as you can see. So we're going to go on to number two. If I can figure out how to spell it. There you go. All right. So here's our minus, here's our two. And again, try this first before, you know, we have a conversation here on this video. All right. So if you notice right here, this is going to be 3, 9, 27, 81. Um, that, do you see how it gets really big really fast? Uh, that's an indication that we're no longer adding the same number or subtracting the same number. We're going to be into multiplying, okay? And so geometric is multiplying the same number every time, okay? And so what's our same number? If you're like, I don't know what this is, um, an easy way to find out uh, the R, right, is actually, let me change. I'm going to change R is going to be, let's make it three. Okay. So an easy way to find out what R is, is by taking the second term and divide it by the first term, okay? By this first term right here. So nine divided by three, which we know is three. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys already knew that. You already knew that, oh, we're just multiplying by three. Um, uh, in case, in case. You can do that with actually any term. You just take the term and the previous term and divide them. Uh, so you can get 81 divided by 27 and you would still get three, right? Because it's a common ratio. So again, this is just multiplying by three every time. So we know R is equal to three. So we are in the world of geometry. No, not geometry, geometric. All right, so now we're gonna go with the recursive formula. So I'm gonna scroll down over here on the right. And as you see right here, it says recursive formula. It's the same thing as the uh, same concept as the arithmetic. Uh, wherever you see the ends, we're gonna leave them and replace the other stuff that we know. So recursive, now um, some places they'll still leave it as an A, but for us, we're gonna go, uh, we're writing it as a G, a G for geometric, A for arithmetic. Um, so G, GN is equal to GN minus one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the previous term and what are we gonna do with that previous term? We're gonna multiply it with three. So times three. Hey, don't put an X there because you know that could be mistaken for a variable. So we're going to use the dot instead. Or you could put parentheses three as well. I usually use the dot. 
Okay, so, and then we just need to state our first term. So our first term is, oh, this three right here. There we go. So we have two different threes going on. And so we have, let's see what, uh, we did the yellow and blue, okay. So again, our R is this three right here, which is from there. This bottom three, the G13, that is not the ratio, right? That is coming from this first term right there, right? And then, now, so that's done. Explicit formula, we're gonna use this explicit formula right here on the right. So we're gonna go G sub N is equal to G1. We know what G1 is, G1 is three times it by uh, the R, which is also three, and then to the N minus one power. You notice I'm writing it up top and it's smaller. It's called an exponent, right? And so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna write it that way. Do not write it. So many people write it like this. Not the same thing. Now that means multiply. We, that's not what we mean. This is like repeated multiplication, right? The exponent, please don't do it that way. I'm going to erase it out of existence. All right, so again, uh, our first term is, this This three came from our first term. And our, where's my yellow? And the, our ratio, right? That's where that's coming from. So those are all related. And now we're going to find the ninth term. Um, just a little quick tip here, just a hint. Oh, usually for uh, geometric, we can't go, we can go very high, but just the numbers are would be very, very large. And so we're not gonna, you're not gonna see very big terms here, okay? Not to say you can do that with arithmetic, but you know, just saying. So we want the ninth term, so it's gonna be G sub nine. And you can, you might hear me say G nine, or I can say G sub nine, which means like subscript nine. So, so I'm showing that it's supposed to be smaller. And again, we're gonna copy down the other stuff that we already have. We know instead of N, we're gonna put in nine minus one, right? So we're gonna go G sub nine is equal to three times three to the eighth power. Because nine minus one is eight. Now, what goes first? We're not multiplying first, right? Remember, we're doing exponents first. So um, this is where we're gonna get our calculator. Ooh, should have had my calculator over there. Um, uh, I wouldn't recommend using your phone calculator for this particular one, just because you're not gonna be able to use it on the test. So get a regular calculator, but if you have nothing but your phone, then just use that. That's fine. Um, and so it's gonna be, again, three times three, and then this is you see the X to the Y, that's gonna be your exponent. Uh, some of your calculators might have a carrot that looks like, like this upside down triangle arrow pointing thing. You can use that. So I'm gonna go, so you'll see that, see how it shows as a carrot here. And then uh, to the eighth power. So we're gonna just go like this. This equals, do you see how it's a really big number for the eighth? Yeah, 19,683. So 19,000, so let me just write it right here because I don't have room. So G9 is equal to 19,683. That's the ninth term. This is the, that's why it's called powers, like exponents are powers, because see how powerful that is? It's very large. All right, so now we're done with that. So now we've seen one arithmetic, one geometric. If you have not yet tried to do these on your own, please do it, okay, and then come back to me, okay? All right, on to number three. Okay, let's take a look here. So we're going 128, negative 64, 32, negative 16, we're like, Okay, these are getting small pretty quickly and they're not going by same amounts by adding. So I'm gonna think this is a geometric. So I'm gonna just take this R because this looks a little bit, hmm, a little tricky, right? So again, remember it's the second term. So it's negative 64. I'm gonna divide that by 128. Okay, so on my calculator, I'm gonna go negative. Here's my, oops, let me press clear first. Okay, so we're gonna go uh, 64, negative, so negative 64, divide that by, let me go this a little bit small, 128, which would be negative 0.5 or negative one half. Either way you do it, I will personally like to do negative one half. Um, you can do negative 0.5, that's okay. You could also reduce the fraction or simplify the fraction, either way is okay. 
You can do negative one half or you can do negative 0 0.5. Again, same thing, doesn't matter. So now we, uh, so if you look, if you're like, ooh, I think that's what it is, but let me just check. So we're gonna do negative 64 times. So if we go negative, oops, again, here all. So 64, so negative 64, and now we're going to multiply it by negative one half. So multiply by 0.5, there we go. And what do we get? Look, it's positive 32, which is our next term. So yeah, uh, most likely this is right. Okay, definitely this is right. You can do that again for if you want to just make sure, like on a test, like just do it again, right? 32 times negative 0.5, and you get negative 16. All right, so we know that this is our R. We are definitely in the world of geom geometric. I want to say geometry. It's not that. Um, so we're going to go with the recursive formula. So we're still in this uh, geometric side. So recursive formula is going to be Gn is equal to Gn minus 1 times our R, which is negative 1 half. I'm just going to put negative 1 half like this. OK? And then we have our, uh, well, not explicit yet, what did we forget? Did you say G1? You are absolutely right. Figure out to tell them where we're starting. So what, is, what are we starting at? Oh, we're starting at 128. Now we're done with the recursive formula. Then we're going to go into our explicit, um, again, which is going to be right here. So Gn is equal to G1, which we know is this 128, the first term times, and so what are we going to keep on multiplying 128 by? It's negative one half, right? Negative one half. Next time I get a fraction, I'll I'll do the I'll do the decimal one. Okay. And then again that's going to be to the n minus one power. Okay. Some of you guys may notice that I'm now using parentheses. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm including that negative. That negative is part of the number. So if I don't do the parentheses then it's going to it's going to make my answer wrong sometimes because it depends on how many times I'm multiplying by negative. Um, I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you. Well, yeah, this one will make a difference. Well, all right. So, uh, so now we're going to find the tenth term. So G10 is equal to 128 times negative one half to the 10 minus one power. You want to just go automatic and write nine there. That's fine. Um, I'm just going to rewrite this so that I have everything all simplified down. And that's going to be to the ninth power. Remember, we're not dividing first. We're not going 128 divided by two. We're not doing that first because we have to do the exponents first. All right. So let me get my calculator back. Clear everything. And then it's going to be so 128. And I'm going to put parentheses. Right, and the way we put a fraction. Oh, let's see what I just put it here. All right, and then I'm going to put, go uh, one divided by two. I'm going to put that negative right there. So one divided by two, and the parentheses. So do you see how it's written right there? Might be a little small on your screen. Now we're going to go to the ninth power. So remember, it's x to the y to the ninth equals negative 125. So G10 is equal to negative 0.25. I think I said negative 125, right? Yeah. Um, that's negative 0.25, which is going to be negative 1 fourth, right? So that would be the 10th. OK, just so that you know, if we did not like, let's say if we did negative 2. Ooh. I'm forgetting to do it. So if I go two or negative two uh, to the second power, right? That means negative two times negative two. What should that be? Positive two, right? If I don't put any negative, I don't, I didn't put any parentheses there, right? Okay. This is already telling me. This, they already know that they put up invisible parentheses in there. On your other calculators, it will not do that. I'm just saying. Okay, this, this particular one, it it like is already putting the parentheses in there. Because um, normally, okay, I'm, this is a side note for people. So if you go negative two squared, right, what would happen is we got two times two, and then we just add on that negative 
outside because uh, we're this is saying without the parentheses, it's saying that we're not including this negative with our exponent. So our answer would be negative four, okay? But if we put in the parentheses, negative two squared, what does this mean? We have negative two times negative two, which we know would be positive four, okay? That would be the difference. And that's why we would put in our calculators the negative for the parentheses along. Okay? So, my calculator was being silly. All right, um, moving on to number four. Let's speed things up a little bit. All right, we got 16, 11, 6, 1. Uh, we're not going down too fast, so it looks like we're going to be subtracting a bit, right? So we got 16 minus 11, 16 minus 5, which would give us 11, 11 minus 6, which would give it. So you see what I'm saying? So another way, just like how for the for the uh, ratios, right, common ratios, you did the second term divided by the first term. You can do the same thing here, except you're going to subtract. You can go second term minus the first term, which would give us a common difference of negative five. Okay, so that's another way to do it. If you're like, if some of the numbers are big or weird, or like negative five, I'm sure you could do it in your head. But if not, then this is another way you can do it, right? The second term minus the first term, or just as long as they're next to each other, one minus six, six minus 11, whichever one, it'll still give you the same difference because it's common, right? So again, we're in the world of arithmetic. And then recursive formula, let's go. I'm just going to move this over here as your reference. Recursive formula is going to be a n is equal to a n minus one. Uh, again, we're going to be subtracting five, so minus five. We're going to state our first term, which is going to be right here, sixteen. Right, explicit formula. A n is equal to first term sixteen minus five, because that's what we keep on minusing times n minus one, okay? That's it. Okay, a lot of people want to do more. They're like, no, I got to continue. No, there's nothing else to do. It's a formula. You should have n's in there, okay? And then we're going to find the 41st term. So a41 is equal to 16 minus five times, okay? Instead of n, we're going to put in 41. So here, what you know you did it right if you don't see any n's in there. If you see an n in there, something's wrong. You, you you did something wrong. Okay, so that's one way to know. So we got 16 minus five times 40. And then we're gonna go equals to 16 minus five times 40 is gonna be 200. Right, because five times four is one. That's that zero right there. And that's gonna be A41 is equal to 184. Okay. Isn't that much better than just subtracting two? Did I do that right? What did I forget to do? Because it's 16 minus 200, so that's going to be negative 184. That makes more sense. Because if I'm subtracting, I should get smaller and not this one positive 184. That wouldn't make any sense, right? All right, so there we go. And then moving on to number five. So it looks like negative. Oh, I'm not sure, because it does seem to go pretty big. So. Let me try, but it does seem like it's going, like if I look at 17 and 47, it looks like there's 30 in between that. 47 and 77, there's 30 in between that. So I think I'm getting arithmetic, right? So our common difference, if I do 47 minus 17, right? First, sec, uh, third term minus the, I'm I'm not trying to deal with negatives right now. I'm just trying to make it easier for me. So I'm, that's, I'm going to the third term minus the second term, just so that you know. And I got uh, 30. Right. So if I wanted to check, I could just be like, uh, clear everything and wrote negative 13 plus 30. Yep. And I get 17. Yep. That makes sense. So we're good to go. We're definitely in the world arithmetic. And we're going to go to recursive formula. So it's going to be a n is equal to a n minus one. Remember, these are smaller, uh, plus 30, because we're adding 30 every time, right? So you see how these numbers are getting bigger. 
Uh, and then we're just gonna state our first term. What, where are we starting? At negative 13, all right? So what we're saying at negative, th uh, at negative thir starting from negative 13, we're adding 30 every time. Explicit formula. So a n is equal to first term, negative 13, plus the common difference, so plus 30, times n minus 1. Basically, it's a term number minus 1. And so we're going to find the 19th term. So we're going to go a19 is equal to negative 13 plus 30. Instead of n, we're putting in 19 minus 1. And so we're going to get Okay, a lot of people add here first. Please don't call for that. Uh, plus 30 times 18. That does 19 minus 1 is 18. And so that's going to be negative 13 plus that. Uh, 55, 40. Let's just check. I'm doing that in my head. So 30 times 18. Whew, 540. So 540 minus, all well, I have it here, so minus 13 is going to be 527. Does that make sense? Let's see here. Yeah, we're getting bigger. So we're starting 77. So yeah, 527, we're on the positive side. So yeah, looks like we're good to go. So our A19 is going to be, so the 19th term is 527. All right, and then we're going to go on. So number, we're now on number five, six. Woohoo. All right. So again, I see that we're gonna get we're getting pretty big from the difference between negative one and three is not the same as negative nine and twenty-seven. So I know I'm probably gonna be in geometric. We will be geometric. So r equals two. I'm gonna just go three divided by negative one, which is gonna be negative three. Okay, these two guys right here. And uh, so, yeah, which makes sense. That's how we're getting negatives and positives. So we've got ge geometric recursive formula. I'm going to just move this over. You can see. So gn is equal to the previous term times by negative 3. Explicit formula. Oh, sorry. First term is equal to negative one. We're starting at negative one. And then so explicit formula is gn. First term times by r to the negative or to the n minus one. Another way to do this, you may see this as an answer. So gn is negative one. We can just go negative of negative three to the n minus one, right? Because if you don't see any any number there, we know that it is a negative one. So this is another way you may see the answer. Both are fine. Okay. You may prefer to do it the left way. You can do it the right way. <laughs> um, right hand side way. Um, either way is fine. Okay. Now we're going to go for the eighth term. G8 is equal to negative, negative 3 to the uh, 8 minus 1. All right, which we know that's going to be negative of negative three to the seventh power. And I'm going to take my calculator and we're going to go here. So parentheses negative three. This, this is a, this is a negative three to the to the seventh power. And then don't forget, I didn't do that negative out there because this is this one is getting a little complicated. So I'm just going to do the negative of that, which would be 221, 2187. Okay. And that's how that would be. Okay, on to number seven. It says determine the graph. Uh, determine if the graph represents an arithmetic or geometric sequence, and something, something, and explain why. Then uh, state the domain and range of the graph. All right. We take a look at this one. This is definitely linear, right? And we know with linear, 
if you look right here, um, as we said before, our linear is going to be arithmetic, and it's definitely discrete. So we're, we're going to say it's arithmetic. Because there's, I use BEC for my because. Um, you can say each term goes up by. by two every time. Or you can say it's linear. Any of those are fine because linear indicates that you are going up by the same amount every time. If you weren't, it wouldn't be linear, right? Um, and then we're gonna write the domain and range. So, so domain, I'm change up the colors here. So domain, remember, is talking about the x's. So we're just gonna start at the very left dot, left point, which is gonna be one, two, three, all the way to the most right point, which is up to seven. So we're gonna stop at seven because that's where our last point is. You make sure you're doing those squiggly brackets, right? And then the range is gonna be, range is talking about the y's. So we're gonna be, how low does it go? So the lowest number is negative five. And the next one is gonna be negative three negative one, and then we're gonna go one, three, five, and seven. You'll notice on the range, it does go up by two every time. Like you can see, we're done. See the domain and range, it's a good day. All right, so we're gonna to go to number eight. You notice that automatically you can see that it is not um, linear, right? You can't draw a straight line through it. Um, this is what we call exponential. And so it's going to be geometric. So we're going to say it's geometric because we say it's exponential. Or you can say that, so it starts at eight, then it goes to four, then it goes to two. So do you see how it's like, you can say that it's, uh, You can say that each term goes down by half. Okay. Um, either way is okay. I think the easiest way is to say it's, it's, it's exponential. Um, and then we're going to go domain here. Again, that's talking about the x's. So you're looking at the furthest left one, and that starts at 1. Then it's two, three, all the way up to five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the range is going to be, let me make that. So range is, remember, talks about the y. We're going to go with the lowest one. So again, that's going to be halfway between. So that's one, then this is going to be one half. So one half, then it's one, two, four, eight. One, two, four. So again, if you want to see this on the graph, it's one, two, four, and then eight. So we're looking at the y portions for the range. All right, on to number nine. All right. Um, let me take a look. All right, looking at number nine, we have, again, linear, so we know it's going to be arithmetic. Ah, arithmetic because it's linear. Okay, you see it could go, it goes down by two every time, right? We're, what is our common difference? Negative two. Um, our domain, again, it's just talking about the term terms. There's term one, term two, term three, and we have all the way to five. That's on this graph. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. All right, that's our domain. And then our range. Again, we're talking about the smallest to smallest to greatest. So we're going to start with the lowest point, which is negative eight. And then we're going to go to negative six, uh, negative four, negative two, and then right here at zero. So a lot of people, they get confused and they'll write one. 
but we're not talking about the x, we're talking about the y. And the y is here at zero, okay? And then uh, we're gonna go to number 10. There we go. And if you can see right here, definitely not linear. That is gonna be exponential, so it is geometric. We're geometric because it's exponential. And as you can see here, we're starting at one and going up to three and then going up to nine and 27. So that's definitely multiplying by three. Okay. And so domain is going to be, we only have four points up there, which means that's four terms, one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, four. Um, you're not writing all these numbers because there's no points at these numbers. Right? So we don't need to do that. And then range. Again, we're starting with our lowest point, which is going to be 1, 3, then 9, and then 27. Oop. <laughs> no parentheses. Sorry, remember this is 26. In between 26 and 28, which is going to be 27. All right, that's that's the that's how we interpret those uh, kinds of graphs, and now we're gonna actually just make a graph, right? We're gonna uh, we're gonna graph the sequence, right? So again, remember what we we're saying in our arithmetic sequence, uh, in our explicit formula. This first number is our first term, so we're starting at three. So our first term, our a one, starts at three, Let's do that, and then we're gonna go up by two. So our next term, we're gonna go up. So we'll go to the next term and go up by two, right? Next term, go up by two. Um, a lot. Some people, they just keep on just going up by two like this, but you just made the first term like three different numbers. You, you can't do that. Um, you got to make sure you're going to the next term. There we go. And we're just going to go as far as we can. We can't go anymore because we'd be up here outside of the graph. So we're just going to stop right there. That's it. Um, That's good. Number 12. Um, here. Again, first term, we're starting at one. And then we're going to go up by three. So go next term and go up three. Next term, and you're going to go one, two, three. We just count the spaces. Boom. It's like that. All right. And let's go on. See, we have four more problems to go. All right, again, first term is nine. So we're starting at first term. Do not start on the y-axis because it's that's that's the zero with term, right? So we're not starting on the zero with term, we're starting on the first term. And then we're gonna go down by two because it says minus two. So next term down by two. And you can see the pattern. Yeah, over down two. Boom. So fast. So fast. Um, I'm just going to make this a bigger screen because we don't need that side anymore. And again, first term is eight. And we know we're going down because that's minus four. So we're going to go over one term and one, two, three, four. And remember, you're not starting on the space that you are at. You're counting the distances. Okay, over one and then down four. This one, we can only make three points. And that's when we stop Okay, because we have no more room for that. All right, so we're going to read the scenario. Okay, Tim. We got Tim who collects baseball cards. He has 42 baseball cards. It's not like that's what he's starting with, right? After one week, he has 45. By week two, he has 48. So it looks like he's collecting them. Oh, he is collecting them. So he's getting more and more cards, right? So notice there's a pattern, right? What's his pattern? Okay, so if this pattern continues, represent the number of baseball cards he has after the first five weeks as a numeric sequence. So we're going to uh, start with 42. Then we're going to go 45. I think this was wor worded kind of weird because uh, we want the first five weeks. But this is not the first week. You see what I'm saying? But we're going to go, the, the, the intent of this problem is that we want the first five terms. Okay. So, um, but on the test, if you write, the first, uh, the how much they had, and then the five weeks after that, that's fine. Um, so 45, 48, and it looks like we're adding by three. So 48 plus three is 51 and 54. Numeric values, 
right? New, a numeric sequence, sorry, is just here we go. Numeric means number and a sequence, a sequence of numbers. Done. Okay, we're going to write the recursive and explicit. We've done this before. So let's see if we can do it by memory. So an is equal to the previous term. And we're going to add three, right? Because we're adding three every time. And then we're starting with our A1 is 42. Our explicit is going to be um, An is equal to the first term, which is 42. We're adding three every time. We're going to multiply that by N minus one. And now it says we're going to use explicit formula to determine how many cards Tim would have after 35 weeks if this pattern continues. Okay, so here we go. A35 is equal to uh, 42 plus 3, uh, 35 minus 1. And ooh, we need a little bit of room here. I didn't give you much room, sorry. Uh, 3 times 34. I'm going to just put my work over here. Um, we're going to remember multiply first. So 42 plus uh, 90, 100. Let's see, right? It's 12, 102, yes. And then 42 plus 102 is going to be 144. So he's going to have 144 cards. Right? Uh, and then the domain is going to be, what is the domain in, uh, what is it talking about? The domain is talking about like every week, right? So we got first week, second week, third week, fourth week, fifth week, so on and so forth. And I'm just going to put weeks, this is in weeks, right? And then uh, the range is talking about, so we want it in the context of the scenario. So that's talking about the number of baseball cards, right? So he starts with 42, 45, 48, uh, 51, so on and so forth. This is, wait, ooh, <laughs> I don't know what letter that is, but baseball cards. All right, now we're to our last problem. Good job, guys. You made it this far. Um, so now we're going to talk to who. There are four eukaryotic cells. So we're in biology right now. Microbiology, because this has to do with the micro stuff. Um, so four eukaryotic cells in a Petri dish. After one minute, there are eight. Then there are 16. After two minutes, see how it's going. It's like dividing, right? Um, dividing to multiply. Um, all right. So if this pattern continues... So we want the first five, so we're going to go four, then we got eight, then we got 16. What are we doing? We're doubling, right? 16, then 32, and then 64. Okay, and then we're going to write, write the recursive. So uh, write, uh, let's see here. So it's going to be ge uh, geometric, so gn is equal to, we're taking that previous term, and we're multiplying it by two. And we're starting with four. All right. And so explicit is going to be what? Gn is equal to what we're starting with, which is four times two to the n minus one power. Okay. I'm sure that's up high. And then we're going to 15 minutes. So it's going to be G15 is equal to Four times two, so the fifteen minus one. Okay. Technically, this is the fourteenth minute, but we're we're just gonna we're just gonna let that be, because remember this was the this is so. I'm gonna just change this problem. I'm gonna say the first minute mark. This is the first minute. This will be the second minute. And this will be the third minute, okay? Just to reduce on confusion, just saying, okay? Um, so we're going to say this is, in the first week, he has 42 baseball cards. Then the next week, he has 45 baseball cards. 
And then the next week he has 48 baseball cards. You see what I'm saying? Because then it gets kind of got to add more. Anyways, so we're just going to keep it simple here. Um, so first week, second or first minute, second minute, third minute, fourth minute. Catch my drift. Okay. So now, because I'm like, I know that's not. Anyways, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. It's cool. All right. So it's going to be four times two to the 15 minus one, which is 14. So this is where I'm going to call into my uh, calculator. Calculator come. So it's going to be uh, four times two to the 14th power. So this is going to be kind of large. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of cells after like minutes. 65,536. 65,536. I'm pretty sure that's the right number. Yep, I it is. And this is how many cells? That's a lot of cells. Okay. Oh, sorry. So now we're going to go with the domain and range. So the domain is, remember, the number of minutes, right? So on and so forth. I'm putting the dot there, meaning it just continues on, right? And this is in minutes. And then here, the range is going to be the number of cells. So it's four, uh, what was it? Eight, 16, 32, so on and so forth. And uh, these are cells. Four cells, eight cells. You want to be very specific. You can say eukaryotic cells. Either way is fine. All right. Um, please practice, do your best. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Um, go back over the things, try to do it by yourself, right? Um, that's what I would do. Don't just copy down all the things I'm saying, just have no thoughts about it, okay? You got to process, all right? Have a good one.